dad had a tree in a house in Colorado. It was a dead willow tree, and big surprise for my mom. And for their anniversary, he had a chainsaw artist come and carve the tree. It's like 12 feet tall. It's an eagle on top of a cliff with like a waterfall going down. It's amazing, right? And every year, we're, we have a fire pit in the back that we add on and build and do stuff to. And we're burning stuff and burning scraps, and I find this scrap from the tree that he's cut out with a chainsaw. So it's this weird diamond shape. It's not It's not like a, it doesn't look like a log, you know? It's a, it's a funky shape and I just see this face in it and I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna take this piece of wood home and I'm gonna fucking carve it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna try it because I saw the face in it. That's, that's about four and a half years of my life on the wall right there. Of like, of the eagle the eagle in the center was the very first one I did. It took me probably the longest because it was the first one I did. I mean, I had a moment where I cried carving it because I was like, I couldn't believe that I was making it. I was so nervous about messing it up. And then in that moment, I was totally sure that I would never mess it up. Like I got my very first plastic board when I was like seven, and that was about when I saw Back to the Future-ish, because I was like, oh, I want one of those things to give me the skateboard, Mom. I, I lived kind of out on the outskirts of Austin, and so I just would skate by myself, and I had a driveway with a, like a mini mega ramp setup where I would just go down and hit the launch ramp and hit the quarter pipe, and that was uh, that's what I did all day uh, for a long time. <laughs> There is a power tool that is used for engraving on machines, like the bit, the same bit I use, but it's a thing that you hold in your hand. So, and it has adjustable little different size bits and things, but it's like a pin on a string to the unit. So, and I sit there and scrape out like every little bit, you know, or I have a little two and a half inch grinder that on some of the boards I can eat out some of the bigger material and then it's fine tuned with the Dremel and then even more fine tuned hand sanded after that. I'm embossing the image into the board, you know, like if you, I'm, you know, I'm making it a stamp, I'm making it a, a raised and sunken image, you know, a positive, negative. The craft in it that I think that really stands out to me is the cutting of the like angles and lines and then the sanding after that, like just, just making it buttery smooth and like where you can't see the tool marks, where someone will ask me, oh, you got a CNC machine, you know? And I'm like, no, it's all done by hand. And he's like, oh, shit, you got a lot of time. Or like, I'm like, yeah, it does take a long time, you know? My buddy, my shoulder monkey. I carve on them and, and sand on them, mostly sanding at Yellow Jacket a lot. And so I work up there a lot. And so people that work there have seen my work and as the process has happened. And my show is there right now. Skateboarding and art are like, yeah, like big time, thing. big time. I just call it carved skateboard art, recycled skateboard art. Everything comes from the spirit world. Yeah.